This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend Jazz Dickens in his new gym uh, out in Dublin, I believe. Good place to start. What's prompted the change and why here with Pete Taylor? Yeah, definitely the coach Pete Taylor is why I'm here. Um, but when I, when I had great years with, with Georgie and Derry, I have fantastic years, the best years of my career. It's going to be hard to talk it, but I believe I can do it. I can, I can just get that world title coming over here with Pete Taylor. I come out here to have a look, I had a little look around, and um, yeah, it's using me here to come, come to Dublin. It's not, it's not so um, different to Liverpool as well. It's like home from home, the people are welcoming. And um, yeah, Peter's a fantastic coach. Got a great stable of lads in the gym. It's good to bounce off them and, um, and you know, try and better myself in, in, in my technical ability. What was it that made you realise you needed a change, whether it was a change of trainer or a change of scenery? What what prompted it? Well, it was hard. It was hard then because Georgie retired. Georgie Vaughan, who's the coach for the last was it six years or something like that. I think we boxed for, for nearly every title together. Um, didn't win a world title before for one, but nearly got to the top. But Georgie retired. It would have been nice to win a world title for Georgie and Derry and obviously for myself more than anything, but we never, and um, the show goes on. Georgie's retired. Um, Georgie had a fantastic career. It was great for me to be a part of Georgie's career, you know, to hear the stories every day and to, just to be a part of his story as well. It's um, nice for me because he's trained everybody. There's probably no one else in trained and they feel all the top fighters. So it's amazing for me to be a part of his career, share the journey that I share with Georgie and Derry fighting under Georgie too, and Derry, Derry being Georgie's right hand man. Which was fantastic years. So um, it was tough following um, making that decision. You still part of me thinking, you're just gonna come around the house and tell me I'm back in the gym on Monday. And <laughs> it was just, it was just a bit of a lull for a while. After I didn't know where I was to be honest. But does that mean that my boxing should stop or stop in any way at all? No, they just emotions and. And the show must go on at all times till I get what I want. I have to just be focused and, and do what I've got to do in terms of getting better every single day, even when the hard time comes. That was a hard time, but I've I, I seen it through. And when you made that decision to kind of move on and get a fresh setup, what made Pete Taylor and, and Ireland the right place and the right trainer? Technical, technical um, advice. He's meticulous. That's the word that I use to Peter. He's meticulous in his training approach. Everything's, everything's just not perfect. You know what I mean? Everything has to be a little bit better and I like that. And he, he'll bring the best out of me. I'm definitely a better fighter now. I'm a better fighter now than I was fighting for the world title, which is mad, isn't it? And it's, it's where I need to be. So um, I'm happy in me, in me training. It, it's tough on me home life because I'm now live in another country. It happens all of a sudden. I was home, I was comfortable with my coaches, people who I love, Georgie and Derry. And all of a sudden, I'm away from my family. I'm um, working out, but it's working out. Boxing terms, better than, better than I could have imagined. When you go somewhere and you look for a new coach, you you hope it would be the way it is now. Do you think Pete Taylor maybe doesn't get the recognition he deserves as a pro trainer? He's associated so deeply with the amateurs, but he's had in recent years, you know, taking Luke Keeler further than anyone thought he could, uh, the two Tyrones, of course, and, and now you as well. I don't think he's asked that. He's like myself. He's just, a, <laughs> he's just, he's just like um, a normal down to air person who, who loves, who finds passion in what he does. He gets the recognition good. Doesn't mean he's gonna, it's, it's gonna stop if he doesn't. So I think that's that's the um, type of person he is. He's, um, he's obviously won look Olympic gold medals, hasn't he? Um, his daughter being Katie and he, he's a four for world titles in the pros and he's had many champions he's got, he's got nearly all the lads in Ireland so that is the credit isn't it um, what else what else what else could you say he's got all the lads all the top lads in Ireland so that's the test test, test one to him you know so I don't think he's uh, too close on, on, on what the media say you know what I mean it helps. It's good, but I think we're moving into an age where <laughs> if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be relevant, you've got to be, you've got to use social media. It's a, it's the bullshit show, and 
I, I like it and I don't like it. I know I've got to use it either way. No matter what my view is on it, you've got to be, you've got to use it to be relevant, and you've got to be relevant to get the shot that you want to get. So that's that. And the top and bottom is I don't think he gives a fuck whether people adore him or don't. You know. And you said about how it's now difficult, obviously living in a different country from your family. How does it work logistically? So do you go back every weekend? Do you, have you got your own place in Ireland? What What's the deal? Yeah, I just come over here and stay over here in the week and um, I just get my training done first and foremost. That's, that's just been my lifestyle since I've been a kid. I'm, as long as my boxing training has been okay and I've given give it all and I've got my training done that day, twice that day or three times that day, then that's all that sort of matters. But I've never been in a situation like, like this where when I went when I was to fight for the 50 team in Miami a few years ago. We knew there was a timeline on it. Yeah. I'll be there for eight weeks, so I'll fight and I'll come home. I'll have my time here. But when you go home, the kids don't really understand. Are you home or you're not? Does this mean because you're home that we get your time? Or does this mean because you're home that you're home? Because what's going on here? And the, and the kids are a little bit confused. At the minute, I'm just trying to do what's right for them and for me and um, find a balance. But um, I believe in God and I believe me doing the right thing by my career will also be the right thing by my family and it'll show them that it's, it's good to make sacrifices, although it's tough and I don't want to look at it as neglect, but um, I, I think, well, I will make them proud of me, you know what I mean, and I'll make it worth their while. Are you finding it tough, though, from your side, you know, missing them, yes. obviously? For standard to my life, everything. I don't have a social life because I don't want to socialise. I have my family, my girl and my kids. It's the best thing in my life. But um, boxing is um, it's my passion. So there's a fine line there, Dan, isn't he? I've got a beautiful life if I didn't have them because of boxing. Mm. And I've got a beautiful life if I didn't have boxing because of them. It's a catch-22. It's a beautiful catch-22 to have, but it still is a catch-22. Do you know what I mean? I just hope that the kids can understand one day and Miguel can understand. Did you do? Did you support me? And you do. But... And um, you know, also as a man, you find guilt there, don't you? As uh, you can't, you can't be everywhere at once. And you mentioned the world title challenge, and that you're a better fighter now. Have you watched back the fight with Kid Galahad? It's probably not a nice thing for you to watch, I, I imagine. But have you watched it back? Yeah, I watched what was on YouTube once. Um, it was the highlights of the round. Um, I haven't watched it since now. No. How did you find that experience of watching it back? It's tough, Dan. It's tough. I don't even watch the fights when I win. So when you lose, it's hard to watch, you know what I mean? But there's fights that I've won, and I, I've never seen them since. I've never watched them back because I don't give a fuck. It's gone. But with that fight, I have to watch it back because I don't want to... Um, I have to watch it because I don't want to overlook my faults, you know what I mean? It's so important that I correct my faults. So that, that's, with, that's why I watched it back. But yeah, it was tough. How, what, what did you pick out when you watched it back? Because you've obviously come to Ireland in search of making those marginal gains or those small improvements. What, what did you look at and think, I could have done this better or I could have done that better? Well, there's a lot that I could have done better down. I don't want to focus too much on my negatives, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't just see I, I seen it in the, in the fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't have to watch it back because, because, it, because I was the one who was, I was the one who was fighting, it. you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, so I seen it in there, I seen it in... I seen his game plan, he broke away in the fight and and that was that. So yeah, it's good to him. He's the better man on the night. He said some very complimentary things about you afterwards. In the kind of light of day, once you've had some time to process, did that mean anything to you? Were you kind of gratified by that? I don't know, we haven't seen it, but uh, we spoke on the phone the next day. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a gentleman. We spoke on the phone and and that, you know, we we, we wished each other wished each other well. We spoke about what what, what we got planned next and um, then if we ever need each other for sparring, you know, we'll always reach out like we always have in between fights. And that's just that's just boxing. In between the fights and in between the bullshit that you see on the telly, that is that's boxing and that's boxing. So yeah, I, I he still has my respect. Now you've gone to Pete Taylor. What are the areas specifically that you'd like to work on with him? Because you seem like a pretty all-round complete boxer to the outsider. Not really, Dan. Not really. For, for what I'm working on now, you'll see a big improvement in me, and you'll see you see a better fighter than you've ever seen. Anyone who's um, 
he's just back me. He'll be excited and he'll be happy because um, I'm going to be better now. And I can say that with confidence. You know what I mean? It's nice to be able to say that with confidence. The more the better fighter. Um, technical. Just not while you work the te- technical foundations of of the movements of boxing, the mechanics of boxing. Hmm. Everything flows from it. So it's like you can build speed on it. You can build power on it. I've just um, been working on the... Foundations again going back to the start, <laughs> sounds stupid, but going back to a job, I fought for world titles, and I, I, and I don't need to be egotistical enough to, to say, like, oh no, it's only a job, and I also throw a job because I don't. And that's and coming here has proved to me that I, I need to break everything down and start again, and it's it's exciting for me. I'm loving every single second of it. And the route back to where you want to be is that still going to be at featherweight, or have you thought about moving either up or down? Yeah, yeah, it'll still be the same. I've got no got no complaints with the weight. And going into the fight, uh, being strong at the weight was one of the things. That I think featherweight, for me, and especially for the IBS title, the people inside the boxing, they understand with the IBS, a lot of fighters, you, if, you, if you're bad on the weight, you don't fight for the IBS. Because of the because temp- you have a rehydration thing. Yeah, for the people listening who don't understand, you have a £10 rehydration clause and £10. Probably think how can you put ten pounds on over the day if you're struggling to make waves? Ten pounds, not you can you can inhale ten ten pounds in oxygen. <laughs> it's not hard to put on. So that that's the really, aim for me. That's that's how I know that I'm I'm a featherweight and a strong featherweight that I can fight for the IBS. What do you see as your kind of route back? Do you want to have a couple of kind of easing back eight round the ten rounder, or do you want to go straight back in at a higher level? Yeah, well, I think that if the fight ten ten Turns up at high level, I take the fight. But um, I know I'm, I know where I'm at in terms of standard wise. I know I'm best in some of the world champions out there, and I know that inside me. Uh, I just need the points. I just need to uh, that points to come where I can prove it, just to get that fight. But I understand getting the queue. You lost your you lost your fight. You lost your world title. Get back in the queue. Build yourself back up. And I understand that. So the fight that I'm looking for now, somewhere around the top ten, I like the. Um, no, no, with um, a ranking title. Hmm. I've won a British title, I've won European titles. Now I'm looking for a ranking title to get myself back in contention for a world title shot. Um, there's many fighters out there now in Britain that, that are also in the same situation. I won't even have to travel because there's loads of featherweights in, in Britain. So <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need to go far and I can get a fight to get me right back in the mix, for, right back in, in, into a world title fight because, because of me and I've, I've, for years I've, um, I've done all that stuff. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to win a world title. That's, that's the only thing that, that I need to do now to, to, to say I've completed it, mate. <laughs> that's what we want. Um, let me talk to you about some of those featherweights um, in the UK. What do you make of what's happened with the IBF belt since your challenge for it? Uh, Kid Callaghan obviously got poleaxed by Kiko Martinez, kind of against the run of play. And now Martinez is going in with Warrington again. What, what do you make of all that? It's a mad one, isn't it? The IBF featherweight title is like a pinball at the minute. It's just <laughs> everywhere. It's um, I, I said this in another interview yesterday about like Warrington's form, giving it up so he didn't have to fight Gallagher, because that's what happened. Um, then, then losing in the fashion that he did, and then drawing, and now he's fighting for it again. <laughs> <laughs> and he still it's hasn't got fight Gallagher. No, we still, we still have to work out, you know. I don't know where Galahad is. Galahad is um, still good enough to um, fight for it, isn't he? He's yeah. still, he's, you know, he's right, right back in the mix. He's still there. Who else is he? Um, Colin and Lee Wood are both fighting. Yeah. For the WBA, and hopefully, hopefully Lee Wood gets upgraded to super champion. Um, so, yeah, it's wide open in Britain. Britain's flying. And only not, not long ago, Dan, when, when Warrington did have it, he was Warrington, Galahad and me were number one, two and three in the IBF World Rankings. Three British fighters in the number one, two and three. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't Ryan Walsh like just either in front or behind you before you beat him as well? Yeah, that was the WBO. Was it oh, w- yeah, you're w- right, yeah. Oh, that, I was number two. He was number... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're all great world-class fighters. That's, that's what we know. Yeah. This, no, I thought the answer is there, be saying fuck no, because number two is the name, same as number 20, Dan. Number one is the only place that you want, you know what I mean? Number two, no one ever will remember number two, you know? 
<laughs> Those two fights we just talked about, the Warrington Martinez rematch and Wood against Conlon, who who do you like in those two fights? It, it's hard to call. I should be saying Warrington. I should be saying Warrington because because of what he's done and what he's accomplished. But the landscape has changed because Kiko Martinez is now in the best form that he's going in. A form, form is a lot going into a fight, Dan. Form is just count for a lot, you know what I mean? Because although like we don't like to admit it, but confidence is a lot too. Conf- fight is five on confidence. I think there's only, many, there's only so much you can do um, in terms of movements as a fighter. But this, what separates these fighters from the movements to super level is the confidence. That's what I really believe. Because you can only be so good. And then what? How do you get to superstars? And I think I honestly believe it's confidence in your self belief what fighters have. So I think that being world champion, you know, Pico, um, he will probably be thinking he's in the, in the form of his life. Whereas Warrington coming off the form that he's on, he's going to have to work hard mentally to, to, to actually to believe that he's in the form of his life because he's not. He's actually in the way form of his life yeah. on paper. If you think on paper, I'm not trying to criticize the great champion there, by the way. I'm saying on paper. So with, um, we'll have to see with that one in terms of... I want Warrington to win, by the way. Um, in terms of Lee Wood and Conlon, Lee Wood should win too because of the fighters that he's, he's been in there with and how he's, he's been up and down his career. They are important for the fighter to, to, to be a champion. They, they make or break a champion and um, Conlon hasn't had these questions yet. Does that mean? Does that mean Conlon can't win? Does it fuck? It, it just means that like he's had the better run and the form going into the fight, and that's it. That's that's it. Um, but Conlon can win the fight. I haven't seen too much of Conlon. You know what I mean? But what I do know is when he has gone into fight, it's up. It's said with respect. It's all been his way. Mm. He should have won every fight that he's gone into. You know what I mean? This time, it's it's a real fight. So uh, we, we'll, I think we'll find out about Conlon now, Bobby. Is he the man? This we will find out now. And any of those the main four featherweight champions, is there any in particular you feel suits you best? Um, I don't know. It's all of them. All of them. I, I, I beat them all, Dan. I will beat them all. That, that's, that's where I stand on it. Um, there's only two belts. We're talking about four people, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's... Um, I'm not interested in fighting the, the losers, um, but I would like to crack at the, at the winners, either of them, Sassy Warrington, Lee Wood, Collins, or Kiho Martinez, any of them there. And even the other champions, you know. Well, you've already beaten one of them, so <laughs> it kind of helps. Yeah, Lee Wood. I, I think it'll be a very different fight this time. In my favour, he's done a lot of improvement, but I've also done a lot of improvement, so yeah, it'll be a different fight in my favour, so hopefully, yeah. Yeah, let's let's get it on. So um at the minute I'm probably rooting for my fellow countryman, Mick Collin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you been adopted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jazza O Dickens from now. Oh Dickens yeah. is not Irish name anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, before I let you go, just remind people out there, you said you love it and you hate it, but social media, how can people find you on it? You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Don't tell them. Yeah, like, you as well, so, so you can't find me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you don't want people that's to that's know, that's why. Why. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, all right, then, Dan. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you. No, no, I appreciate you too, mate. And yeah, best of luck with everything. It's good to see you trying to bet yourself out there. Thank you, my mate. All the best.